Hi, this is a video for Tom Jones in Wake Falls Marine in North Carolina. Uh, this is your Volvo Penta 5.0, I think. Uh, let me just see if I read that. Yeah, 5.0 GXIG. Um, I have the computer connected. I have eyeball reference. Uh, the computer is definitely not power on the uh, main power relay or the fuel pump relay. So I'm going to turn the ignition off, turn it back on. I can have a meal, which is right here coming but I have no activation in either one. Uh, this is definitely not the case we had before. Something happened to this computer. Uh, I wanna show just a short capture of the first test that I did. Uh, let me just make sure that I am in the part that we are really interested in to see. Let me just forward a little bit here. Uh, make sure that I am, come on. Maybe it's in the beginning. Signal, which is also working good. Uh, the reason I, the signal is changing again the screen like that is because I have a big time frame compared to this uh, a regular, you know, five milliseconds or so. Things that I want to show you as well the injector millisecond was perfectly in time. Um, let's see if I can go more. Just going forward on the video myself. Just starting it again. You know, what I want you to see there, which is very important, that's what I'm repeating the, the video, is that we have, well, after, you know, I have the main power relay on and the fuel pump relay on. I don't know if I talk about, I was, I know I, like if you revisit the video, I know I mentioned it a few times. You know, checking, you know, all the sensors. And again, this is for you. This is the same test, CCM test for uh, Wake Falls Marine in North Carolina and test that as good. Uh, not the case today. Okay, so I'm going to start. I'm doing another video for another customer behind the scene. <laughs> all right, so but I can communicate with the computer. <clears throat> it's retrieving the full codes. If I go over the full codes, uh, three in sender and bus opener open. I don't have the three in connected as you can see, everything is uh, the, as far as the three in sender. And I did that on purpose so to see if the actual computer is reading is reading properly. I check both of the fiber reference and it's good. I can also do a test. And if I go and do the relay test, uh, all relays on. The main power relay comes on, not the fuel pump. So again, this is a test that you can do with Diacom, but the fuel pump is not coming on. I can do an injector fire test, but it's nothing happening. So no response from the computer itself. Um, if I run the computer, which I, if I connect this in here and I run this now, I can show that I, it shows that I have RPM. You see that? And look at the injection pulse width. And I can change that. If I go here, let me actually create a zoom into that one so you can see the injector pulse width. So we can see that. Uh, let's take a look at the RPM as well. I'm going to put them like that. We don't have to be looking at those small numbers. Uh, the, the computer thinks it's running because obviously I'm providing the signals that I'm supposed that are supposed to be there. Um, 
definitely something that I don't like. It shows us the really fuel relay, pump status, OK, and main power relay. Let me see, ignition relay, driver status, OK, uh, because it's seeing that I'm supplying, you know, what, what the computer will like to see is the 12 volts coming from the relay all the way to the computer. It's not being activated because obviously they're not. And you saw that when I did the test, this one came on immediately. And obviously right now I got no injectors. You see right here, all the injectors are off and no coil. So these, this is definitely something different as what we had before. Uh, one thing that I want to see, we got 676 hours. So I'm going to stop this. <clears throat> So we got 676 hours, and this is a stop. Let me go over to your folder. Uh, okay, let me close all this. We don't need no more. Sorry about that. So just want to read briefly your email uh, before. It said that you have uh, a large since 2007 with a 5.0. It sounds like it's backfired through the intake during a crank event. Every now and then, it will start up and run very rich and poorly for a uh, brief few moments. The starter sounds like a hydrolux during the crank event. Starter has been replaced, solid power to starter, two cranking batteries, the selector switch, blah, blah, blah. I mean, you know what you sent me before, but um, I did not experience any of that. And your uh, concern was pretty much ECM injector drivers, not like um, not coming on. So this is definitely something um, as you saw in the video, I have all the capture values and you have 175, 175, 68. And we have how much now? Let me see that. So 175.68 to 176.07, so around half an hour. So yeah, it looks like the boat was running for half an hour. Something happened in that half an hour, and that shorted whatever it needed to be shorted. I am um, definitely, you know, going to need to check this further because um, it's definitely something internal on the computer, no doubt about it. But what I want to just to reiterate is that it was not what it happens before. This is a completely different uh, situation, um, and it will definitely require further testing and further repairs. Hopefully, I can repair those. Uh, they have a driver internally. Let me stop the video one second. All right, for your records again, this is your computer, and it still has your name on the bottom, right? Uh, this is pretty much the same computer as yours. Uh, one that was deemed not repairable. It was up to the microprocessor. This was a lightning strike. I keep this one just, as you can see, the coil on this one is completely blown. This was a lightning strike and no way to repair that when, when it's that much of a damage. But so what I want to show you is how this computer is set up. Uh, this controller right here, this I see here, uh, these are coils and injector drivers in here. This is the driver for some of the coils, but the main uh, driver in charge of send the signals to activate coils and drivers for pump and etc. is this one right here. I do have them stuck, but this is a very intrusive repair. The reason why is because it's under the connector. And this is always a risk that it can happen that it can damage the computer. I will always try to be as as careful as possible, especially with a computer that's still communicating, but I want to reach out to you before I do any repairs because I have to take the entire board out of the case and then remove the connector from the computer in order to get this out because it's under the connector. So this kind of repair is usually, um, but it has a risk. And this is what I want to uh, get from you. Uh, if I remove the chip 
and the computer for any reason doesn't like it uh, again I have probably 95% um, success rate doing this repair but it's still a 5% possibility that the computer will no longer work I will not uh, take a chance to take completely the loss because this chip is very expensive the IC to get this plus the time in order to do the entire repair is probably eight hours and then I have to involve or maybe even more to dissolve the, all the connector resolve everything back change the IC and I cannot take a complete loss on that so uh, again the repair for something like this is around if um, you take 50% of the chance I take 50% of the chance which I think is is fair otherwise in this case I would rather than if you don't want to do or your customer because I know this is your customer doesn't want to proceed I would rather send the computer back and then just collect the payment for the testing at this moment uh, thank you so much for your business hopefully we can proceed with the repairs let me stop one second and show you how that uh, I see uh, looks and then um, we can close the video. I'll be right back. All right, I just want to show you quickly. Uh, so these are the ICs. Uh, let me make sure this can focus in there. So this is the exact IC we have under here, and I don't want to take it too much out of the packing uh, because again, these are very expensive, but they have a very big heat sink under it and that's what it makes it very hard to remove and that can cause the problem about damaging the computer because there's a lot of heat that has to be involved in order to remove those i will obviously use a hot plate uh, let me see what i put area right here so in order to use to remove that i use the hot plate so i can heat up the entire computer and not just that area to try to avoid any damages so i'm very careful i am very professional in what i do and again you will be in good hands but there is a risk involved in there and i will uh, again just run out this with you and you can ask your customer if we agree to the repairs then i can have it ready probably by the end of the week coming week i will be sending this your way thank you so much for your business again look forward for your response thank you so much bye bye